Thanks for staying with us. Uh, the pan Yoruba socio-political group Afeniferi has demanded significant changes to Nigeria's security framework to combat increasing incidents of kidnapping and banditry. The Yoruba group urged President Bola Tinubu to implement a comprehensive overhaul of the nation's security architecture to address the pressing issues uh, effectively. It urged the acceleration of plans to establish state police and the integration of modern technology to combat banditry and terrorism aiming to reduce incidents of kidnapping and other forms of crime. The communique also called for Amotekun to be licensed to carry lethal weapons and advocated for enhanced cooperation between Amotekun and other security agencies. It proposed the installation of command and control posts across local government areas to facilitate real-time information sharing. And our guest this morning is Akim Malolu, uh, President Yoruba Ronu uh, Leadership Forum. Good morning and welcome to the program, Akim. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, before we delve into the specifically Amotekun, let's look at generally this um, this uh, sectional uh, security apparatus that we've we've had in Nigeria. So far, Amotekun is the most successful. We've had the Eastern Security Network, and in some cases, they have been branded as something uh, different from what they were set up to do. Um, so sometimes they are even saying they are doing terrorist activities and all that. You go up north, we also have a uh, an outfit, but theirs usually is for, uh, I would say, burning of cigarettes and destroying drinks and all that, and marrying of people. We have not seen those that are as actively uh, involved in security as the Amotekun. What do you think is the success story of Amotekun? that should be copied nationwide because if they're as successful as they are without arms there must be something that is keeping them as unique as they are yeah thank you very much uh, when the issue of uh, insecurity became difficult for the government of the day at the federal level to tackle uh, the southwest governors came up with a security network codenamed Amateku. And the brilliant ideas be, be behind the setting up of that security network was to give attention to the rural areas that were being tormented by bandits and terrorists. And we saw incidents of raping, kidnapping, and destruction of farm produce by farmer elders. Now, January 20, 2020, that was when it was necessary to set up that community policy. The federal government was rattled by it. And at the end, the vice president Yemi Oshibajo intervened so that both the private security arm of this uh, Western region and the federal government could work together. So they were able to achieve that synergy which we all wanted. Now, if we now look at the advantage of having that security uh, network was to assist the rural people because in any nation all over the world the rural areas must be made peaceful for farmers to be able to practice their their activities and we lost that and we are still losing that at least some some uh, some days ago some ondo women came out shouting about some of these same crises that we set up Amateku for in Ondo itself. Ondo Amateku, they have, they have done very well. I cannot say the same thing of Lagos, because Lagos too enacted the law. Ogun also enacted the law. Osun, it's okay, I think they are doing their best, AKT. But those three frontline states, are at their best to assist in rural 
rural uh, protection, rural people protection. Okay. Uh, now, well, the crisis we have today uh, is that we still have this banditry and kidnapping still, still above what it should not be. We have a president who is from uh, the southwest region. We have an IG who is from the southwest region. We have a military army, army uh, command who is also from the southwest region. Then what have we gained? That is the all important question. What have we gained? Mm. Okay. If kidnapping, raping are still ongoing. Yeah. And we have been asking that weapons should be approved for a Moteku to carry. But it has been difficult to to get that to them. Mm. Okay. The popular thing now is state police. And if we are going to have state police, that means the state police will also carry arms, like the federal police. So what I would advise is federal government, particularly the president and the attorney general of the federation, should expedite actions so that we can have the state police and Motekun can be collapsed into state police, Lasma can be collapsed into traffic arm of the state police, they will be able to prosecute and carry out their lawful duties to the delights of the members of the public and community. From that, from onwards from there, we'll be able to resolve most of the crisis we have within the rural areas, particularly the ones affecting the farmers. Mm. Okay. So we have we have a lot of jobs to do. So this call for arming of a motekun is not just for a motekun. You're talking about um, a state police, um, because in Lagos, for instance, they have uh, neighbors, neighborhood safety watch. I think that's what they call them which is also community policing, more or less, in Lagos. Maybe that's why Abotekun has not flourished that much. Uh, but do you think the, the, the setup of Abotekun uh, can work in every other state the way it is working in Ondo State and uh, a few other states? Uh, and let me take this opportunity to also remember the former governor of Ondo State. I think he did a lot to make sure this Amotekun survives, but he didn't survive to see it or to see Nigeria reap the fruits of this Amotekun that much. I'm talking about Akere Dulu. Yeah. I think his yes, role was yes. very, very, very interesting. So we we'll remember him today as well. He, so, he was the pillar. Yeah. He was actually the pillar to the success and to the creation of Amotekun. Today we have uh, Governor Songwolu as the leader of the Southwest uh, governors. Yes. And we have not been able to do the right thing for Amotekun. Okay. So what? You I see, the, 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 the understanding of rudiments of administration lies on the knowledge of whoever is in charge. If the person has no knowledge, he will just, they will just take the rank and be looking on. Just some days ago, they, they were raping our, our women in the uh, Ondo community. They came out to protest. Has there been any re uh, response? None. Hmm. That is what we are talking about. Late Akre Dolu was a leader through and through. Okay. He uh, made Amatekun to have a strong hold in Ondo particularly. Now, well, what, we can't, what will, what it is will not this... reflected in other states, like Ogun. Have you seen Amoteku moving about? Mm -mm. No. What will this we, 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 can, we can only see a leader. If a leader is good, you will see the change. You will see how he has considered. You will see what he has laid down. You will see what he has turned around. You will see that he has restrained and he has exceeded even more better than the federal government what will be the marked difference if uh, amotekun is armed because 
we thought, or a lot of people thought that when it came up, the, the greatest role they will be playing, or one of the most significant roles they will be playing, is gathering of intelligence and making sure that uh, uh, the police and other recognized uh, uh, security outfits get this uh, intelligence and act on it. So, when you're talking about women being raped and uh, Amotekun cannot do anything because of that, uh, are you saying now that if they have guns, they can, they can just kill off everybody who is, who is raping the women? What would be that difference that the guns will make if Amotekun is armed? You see, the, the recently we have seen Amotekun operatives being attacked by Fulani men. Um, about a week or two weeks ago. Many of them were injured, but none died. And they, they had to mobilize for more men to be able to arrest the, the, head, the headers with their cattle. That is the, when one side is armed with gun and the other side has no gun, it becomes a place. So, but what I would suggest is what I have suggested, that we should hasten the formation of state police so that Amotekun can be co-opted into it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be Amotekun for life. Mm. Since we have state police, let them be co-opted co into it. Then they will do intelligence gathering. They have security arm. They have intelligence gathering arm. They have a persecution arm. They have a traffic arm in the state police. Mm -hmm. They will be able to carry out their duties and will have peace again in the region. So who, would be, the uh, who will be recruiting the state police? You think it should be the, the state? The state government will be in charge of doing that, not the federal. Okay, how are we going to make sure that the fears, some of the people who are saying that state police will not be a good thing, are saying that the governors will use it only to their own advantage? How are you, how do you suggest that it can be done so that they will not use this to their own advantage? Yes, you see, the, the, we, we must continue to emphasize the need for very strong institutions. We are brigandage, gangster behavior will not rule the waves. That is an education for us. We should continue to insist on good institutions, whether state police or the federal revenue agency or any, any security arm or any financial crime fighting arm. We should insist on strong institutions where the influence of the governor we only reflect on the activities of the agency to perform its, its sacred future function in the most appropriate manner that will not threaten lives and property, that will not be used for gangster behavior, and it will not be used for political uh, uh, stampeding. We can achieve good institution we must em continue to emphasize on that and we have ngos we have uh, many activists that will speak out if the governor should mess up mm. you cannot continue with mm. all sorts of uh, committees on um, community but we need a state police and we have people who are thoroughly going to be looking at them i think if we play their role Yoruba Ronu will play their role. Yoruba Council of Elders will play their role. We are the governor still to do the right thing. We will tell him it's not bigger. He's just a servant of the people. He's not a god. So don't have that fear. Okay. Uh, well, um, who is going to fund it? Because some states even are not comfortable with the new minimum wage. Some states have not employed for very, very many years, what they do is what they call in the civil service now replacement. Somebody uh, retires and they just replace that one person or somebody dies and they replace that one person and all that. Employment has not gone on in very many states for very many years. 
And so if you bring in state police, who funds them, who pays their salaries, who is the one who kits them, who gives them everything that they are supposed to have, especially now that the states are complaining? Yes, you see, like I have told you, the people of Nigeria deserve good leaders. Leaders that will not be corrupt. Leaders that the pivot for administration, that turns the administration will not be corruption. Corruption has taken almost 60% of every state revenue. You are aware of that. Mm. Our president removed subsidy and floated Naira. He gave more money to the states. What have they done with the money that today they cannot pay minimum wage? You see, we, if we don't fight corruption, all our institutions will go down. We have refused to fight corruption for decades. We lost Nigerian Airways. We lost Nigerian shipping line. Look at what we are going through in Nigeria today. We call it the economies of agglomeration. Their yeah, industries are relocating not into other regions of Nigeria, but outside of Nigeria. We cannot continue like this with a population of 240 million people and with more procreation ongoing. Hmm. Things must change in this country. We cannot continue to, to, to be uh, disturbed by bad governments and we will not talk. And when we protest, they threaten us, they kill us. We must fight the menace. The menace to one is a menace to all. Mm. The governors must be, be accountable to the money they were given. The money must be used for the welfare of the people. Whatever is signed into law as minimum wage has to be paid. There are no, there are no more excuses in Nigeria, I'm telling you, for God's sake. If you go to the north, the awareness is total now. If you come to the southwest, the awareness is total now. The governors will pay the minimum wage. That is a statement of fact. Mm. Nobody is going to be hiding from them. The protests will be sustained every day, every week in those states where they, they cannot pay minimum wage. What what are they? What what achievements have they brought to the states? Yeah. They have all of many people are flying private jets here and there. And whoever buy, buy, buys a private jet, we always save money to, to maintain it. Mm. Mm. We cannot continue in this lackadaisical like, fashion. Leaders mm. must show desire to change. Mm. Okay, but we are not at their mercy anymore. I'm telling you the fact. We are not at the mercy of any governor or any president anymore, or National Assembly or House of Assembly or whatever they are. The people are the owner of their government. The people are the owner of their revenue. Oh, well, but today, today um, on the papers, it's written that tough times ahead as subsidy shaves 7.7 trillion naira of FAC allocation. We know that uh, governors are receiving more more money from the federation yes. account, but now they have been told, yes. now that they have ac acknowledged the fact that subsidy has returned, they are saying 7.7 .7 trillion has been removed from federation account, which means now that subsidy has continued, maybe the states will not be having that much money. And you say every state can... Uh, you, see, you, see, you, see, you see, the government that should provide the answer to your question is tongue-tied. Many times they have accused them of paying subsidy. Many times they have denied payment of any form of subsidy. So if you cannot get food from a government, <laughs> what do you expect me to say? It's funny. A government must be truthful to its people. Mm. So if, if, if the President Tunumbu's government is not truthful to the people, we can all, we can all read the meaning of food. That a government must not give room for false affirmation. A government must not give room to false description. Mm. And any government that does those two things 
we'll be blackmailing people and we'll be equally be swindling. That is a fact. Okay, uh, well, <laughs> wonderful thoughts there. Let's take a, a final word from you, maybe talking to Nigerians, maybe talking to the government, because right now it is as if you have the ear of the relevant authorities listening to you now. As you're advising them on uh, Moteku and state police and all that, what is your conclusion? Uh, what is the summary of what you've been telling us and what you're telling the government? What we are saying is that to those who occupy sacred offices, it is your duty to provide security for farmers, for elders, for travelers, so that we can have prosperity and happiness in our country. You sh they should not be sleeping again. It is we that, that should be sleeping, but we are the ones uh, doing the job for you. Enough is enough. Enough. Thank is you enough. very much. Enough is enough. I like the way you ended it. Thank you so much, Mr. Malolu, for coming on the program this morning. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. We've been talking to King Malalu, President of the uh, Leadership Forum, and we were looking at the fact that uh, Amotekun should be taken a step further. And not just Amotekun, he was advocating for state police and saying that that was the way forward when, if we want to make sure that security returns to our homeland. And that is how we are going to wrap it up today on the show. We'd like to thank you for being a wonderful audience. And uh, on behalf of the Breakfast family, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Remember, this entire week and maybe beyond, we're remembering Dr. Adadevu, who saved us from Ebola. She died on the 19th of August 20, uh, of that year. So we, we say a prayer to the family and hope that God is continually sustaining them. And for all the heroes in Nigeria, God bless you.